Cervical cancer, 16,000 diagnosed annually. Ovarian cancer, 22,000 diagnosed annually. Infertility, 11.8% of females 15 to 44 years old. 7.4% of married women. Abortions. Two, in 2007, there were 827,609 abortions, which was actually 2% less than 2006. And in fact, abortions have been going down every year, according to this particular site that I went to, since 2004, by about 1% to 2% per annum going down. What do we attribute that to, do you think? Christian, I mean, do you think less... Girls are getting pregnant, or do you think that they're carrying to term? I have no idea. Yeah. It's just an interesting. I really don't know. Uh, okay. Did you see anything about why, how much, and why so many women are using fertility fertility drugs, and we have these mul so many multiple births? Right. I find well, that yeah, they had a lot of stuff on IV, about IVF, mm -hmm. in vitro fertilization. Yeah. It was just a freaking horror story. Mm -hmm. I don't want to even repeat what I read. Well, I didn't read it all. I mean, I started reading this stuff. And, uh, I said, you, you, go there. you do this? You actually, not only do you recommend this, but you actually, people, women actually submit to this? Hmm. Holly's sister did it twice, the first time of which she developed so much liquid in her abdomen oh, that she had to have it sucked out, and she did it a second time. And they're paying like ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If and she had yeah, but the, I mean, the average cost of IV F is seventy-five grand. By the time you get done with the whole process, yeah. Right. See the it's, thing? A, it's yep. an amazingly complicated process. You have to take this drug to do that, this yeah. hormone to do the other, yeah. this one to do the. I mean, it's like are you and shots, and you've got to stay in the hospital for months. Yeah, it's so the, the thing is, you know, women, some women today will do anything they can to have a baby. Right. And yeah, so if they have baby. money, except they, macrobiotics. Right. <laughs> anything but that. They will not. They won't you, do that. You and your wife came to see me, and you were trying to. She was trying to get pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should tell everyone that story. Right. Because after my first son was born. Um, we were trying to have another baby, and Meryl had three miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And after the third miscarriage, we were in a doctor's office. We did some tests. The doctor came out and said, it's medically impossible for you to have a child. Your ovaries are too old. You're not going to have another child. Right at that time, she got diagnosed with a precancer. We found ourselves in Cora's living room. And he said to us, don't believe the doctor. You can have another child. She got pregnant seven months later, and Rio was born yeah. right after that. Cool. So that was the macrobiotic success story, I and mean, that got her attention. Right? We were like, "Wow!" One of my yeah, and, these, and, and every every couple that I have counseled who have been infertile mm -hmm. have had a baby conceived within a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, lower back pain and shoulder pain. The most common reason. For, what, for people to go and visit the doctor. For those two. Small Incontinent, 40%. <coughs> over 20. Wow. Over 20. Wow. Have incontinence. And they say it's normal to go to the toilet and have a pee for women seven times a day. Mm. Sorry, yes. that's way too much. Who says that? Like the medical? Wow. Yeah. Seven times a day. That's a lot of really That's the average. Seven wow. times a day. For women. And I that's believe normal. that. Huh. I believe that. Yeah, I do too. Seven times a day. Most women, I mean, you, when you look at um, most women, that's what they do, right? That's their habit. Right. Mm -hmm. At least seven times. Yeah, incontinence is a most major women. social know, challenge for millions of women <laughs> because they're always wanting to go. You know. That that's a lot of young people who cannot. I know. I know. Hold it in. That just mm -hmm. is. That's mind-boggling, and that's what I would have thought the statistic would have been for. Um, infertility, however, though, because 11% seems really low to me. So I'm, su I'm surprised that incontinence is higher than infertility. Well, infertility is a weird one because a person is not going to be saying they're infertile and nobody's going to say they're infertile unless they're trying. Right. Right, right. that's true. true. Whereas you, true. if you're peeing too much, no matter what, you're going to be peeing too yeah. much. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. 
and it's going to be affecting your social life. So, but do they define incontinence in that way as of excessive trips to the bathroom? Right. And then they've got other subsets of that, like frequent having the urge to go, not being able to go, or going a lot, and you know, and and having uh, irritation and. And probably but, going in the middle of the night a lot. Well, yeah, that's a that's a major one. Yeah. Hysterectomy. Now, this is interesting. 600,000 hysterectomies done every year. Wow. 20 million plus women have had hysterectomies in the United States. And that I did look worldwide, and it's 60 million worldwide. Like it's from when to when? From the time they, they started counting? Just start okay. menopause. Did they differentiate oh, for between yeah. elective? They say 90% of them are elected. I mean, that's scary. How, 19 or 90? 90. 90. Zero. Of what? They yeah, that's what them. I was about to bring up, is that a lot of people are just kind of doing it as some kind of an odd preventive measure for whatever. Could be 90%. Fear. 90% of well, people having their breasts removed, too. Choose right? yeah. to have it done, right. as good. opposed to, quote, unquote, having to have it done. Bleeding. Can't. Okay, now them. this, and this is... This is one that really opened my eyes because I've always been really dead set against women doing hysterectomies for any reason. If they come to macrobiotics, I mean, if they're getting advice from me, right? And this is the reason why. And I didn't even know this. This was just instinctive that I said that, right? This is the fallout. This is the fallout. This is a woman called, her name is, what's her name? Margaret Kent. And the site that I got this was wholewoman.com. W-H-O-L-E? Yeah. And uh, she had, um, what's it called? Pro this is another big problem. Prolapsed uterus, prolapsed bladder, and prolapsed rectum. Big time problem. What does that mean? That's an incredible thing. And it is, right? So, and so this is... One of the consequences of many, these are, these are consequences of what happens to women after they've had a hysterectomy. Severe pelvic pain, back, hip, and leg pain, mm -hmm. sexual dysfunction, fistula. You know what a fistula uh, is? Yes. It's mm -hmm. a hole that develops between the vagina and the bladder or the vagina and the rectum. Oh, dear. Chronic constipation, mesh erosion. No, guess what? I didn't even know. I said, what the heck is that? Mesh erosion, right? So they... Apparently they put a mesh in there to hold the thing up, yep. so and it support. starts to get eroded, and it causes, you know, it's what they call the body rejects it, oh, right? Man. Urinary frequency, slow urine stream, bladder spasms, chronic bladder inflammation, urinary, urinary and fecal incontinence. So they get fecal incontinence on top of the mm -hmm. urinary, sexual non-function meaning it's painful, very painful, hemorrhoids, rigid vagina, vaginal air, lifelong urinary self-catheterization. Oh. Urinary tract infection, rectal colon spasm, recurring and intractable prolapse. You know, which everything just falls down. <laughs> Let's get on to what to do about that's all, all the story. This post is a hard story. Huh? This is after you do a hysterectomy. It's like my mother-in-law. She has a pessary. She had a hysterectomy yeah. years ago. She mm -hmm. wears a pessary for her bladder because otherwise it falls through her, right. yeah. her, her bulb. Yeah. Lifelong restricting, lifting restrictions. Yeah. Progressive musculoskeletal changes, weakness, you know, general overall weakness, adhesions, personality changes, premature aging. Personality changes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, much sure. Hormonal personality. Severe hormonal imbalances, emotional devastation, and chronic depression. Wow. It doesn't necessarily rigidly stay in that pattern. It can change. You know, depending on, because if you ovulate, I mean, if you menstruate at the full moon, that means your, your condition is more young. 
But if you menstruate at the new moon, that means your condition is more yin. All right, so and that changes. Now, the other thing is that when women come into macrobiotics for the first time and they've experienced all this, and this is common, what I've ex told you about amenorrhea, which is no bleeding at all, excessive bleeding, heavy bleeding, uh, bleeding for many days, like four or five days, having cramping, having depression, having fatigue, clots. and having clots, and having, uh, what's the other one? Having, you know, if you have a partner, well, you know, well, you just are uh, very, very disagreeable in terms of <laughs> being bad-tempered and moody and, you know, just not, not being yourself. All right? Now, that's normal. That's considered normal. I remember I was counseling a girl. She was about 18 years old when I counseled her. And I brought this subject to her. And I, and I said, so that's your... So I said, what's your experience? And she told me what I just told you. He said, but everybody has that. You know, I can't go to school for three days. I can't go to work. Well, she was at school, right? Huh. And I said, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be at all, you know. And so she just absolutely blown away when I told her. And then, of course, she started a macrobiotic way of eating. And like, you know, three, four months later, because it does take time, she just can't believe it. It's like a revelation to her. This, this happened. It's, it's amazing, not just with that, but also how people accept disease as being normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's fatalistic. They're yeah. totally fatalistic. Especially as you get older. Right. Mm -hmm. They just accept that that's what happens. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean. Uh, you give in to it. Well, it's like, you know, it's like they, they it's all, I don't know, it's, it's fatalism. There's no question it's fatalism. But it's fatalism also on the part of the medical profession. You know, because I had the disagreeable experience of having to take my father-in-law to see the doctor. Mm. You know, it's like a half of an hour freaking drive. That was probably this, the best part. This is a yeah. Complete, yeah. <laughs> complete waste of freaking time and money and effort. And what's he going to say when he comes up? I am fine. <laughs> I'm doing great. You know, this guy is totally a wreck. I mean, he's a wreck. So I know that the doctor has no clue. The doctor said he was fine? Yeah. I mean, the guy can't He's remember. He's just fine for his age. Oh, yeah, so it's for my age. Yeah. As if age, see, that's the other thing. As if age is equated with being decrepit, degenerate, you know. I mean, it's like, they're not, they're, in this culture, they're synonymous. You know, like, you're supposed to have bags under your eyes. That's just an aging thing. No, come on, it's not. It's by the numbers. Huh? It's all by statistics and by the numbers. That's right. And nobody can think they way out of a paper bag. No. Right, because well, people don't but, think but, of but themselves. But they want to keep eating the way they're eating. And it is normal if they're going to keep eating the way they're living, living and eating. Yeah. The, the other thing is, you see, is, is that the reason is, and I caught on to this for the first time, when I did my last episode of the Mubuku Chronicles, or the one before, because I'm, I'm going into the details of the consequences of...